Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody. Well, uh, I'm on this morning, and uh, I thought I'd go ahead and uh, try to put together a, a top 10 all-time favorite RPG list. But uh, considering that I have a very bad memory, uh, so I I had a hard, hard time trying to remember what some of them are, I thought I'd go ahead and go on a website here, like Game Informer, to kind of jog my memory a little bit. But, uh, like, what I'm going to do right now, um, just go on down this uh, top 100 here, and why I picked Game Informer, well, uh, I just did a simple Google search. Um, the one website above it, um, IGN, I think it was, it had kind of a spoiler thingy on the lower left corner of the screen, where it would show you, like, like five or ten of them already. Um, but I was trying to keep some kind of element of surprise in here. So I backed out of that. I think the next one down on the Google list was uh, PC Gamer. Click that. But the uh, assholes on there, they have that thing where uh, if you have, if, you, if it detects an ad blocker, you'll get an ad saying, hey, you have an ad blocker on your, you have an ad blocker. We need you to move it because we want you to see our ads. You know, that kind of thing. It's, it was an ad about an anti-ad blocker. You know, so, so I don't do those websites, so I said, fuck you guys, and off to the next one, uh, which was Game Informer. And, but again, I can't, again, I have Major League CRS issues. I sat there just kind of trying to remember what kind of RPGs I've played over the years to add to my top ten. Uh, since my brain was pretty much locked up, I thought I'd do something like this. Go on here and look up the top 100 RPGs of all time. This will um, help jog my memory a little bit. But what I'm going to do, just go on down the list, and if I see something I like, I'll add it to my top 10. Um, it, it might be more, it might be less. Um, and I think for the most part, I like a lot of RPGs for a lot of different reasons. So I probably, I'll probably have a hard time trying to actually define them in certain rankings. I've got a few... I've got a few up here that I know are going to be uh, are going to be at the top, at the top of the list, or maybe even at the bottom. But, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm and I'm pretty sure um, out of these 100, a good chunk of these I've probably never played before. Some of these I've probably never even heard of. So I suppose I can go ahead and read the intro. In the early days of gaming, identifying role-playing games was easy. The focus on story, exploration, and character progression was... Stuff we are... Stuff we, stuff we probably already know. Over the years... Yup. I think pretty much these days, our RPG is just anything with, uh, with like, tabletop statistics and random... No Random number generators involved, aka RNG. So, all our all applied mechanics made leveling up, upgrading abilities, equipping gear, forming relationships, fighting the dungeons, yada 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 stuff. I'm sure everybody knows about. A lot of traits in G RPG genetic code. Yep. Celebration of the genre's incredible impact. Oh, and also, to be fair, this um, this whole video here is is, is somewhat rehearsed. Um, I didn't examine all 100 of the, all 100 of the RPGs on this page, but um, I did have to scroll down a little bit to see a few of them, so I'll know how to adjust my web, how to adjust the size of my webcam. So. I saw a few of them, but I didn't see the entire list. So this is at the intersection of narrative, combat, exploration, and progression. Each title strikes a unique balance. And um, after looking at other people's top ten lists, um, I'll probably say like they all, like everybody else says, these are personal favorites. These aren't written down as dogma. I don't expect you guys to like what I like and 
And I'm pretty sure as I go down this list and pick my all-time favorites and pick some others that to me really stunk here and probably are going to agree that, yeah, that's a personal favorite. These are personal favorites. I mean, because... I mean, because how could you not like Chrono Trigger? You know, that kind of thing. What? You don't like Final Fantasy III? Well, I thought it was all right. What? That's blasphemy. You know, that kind of thing. Strikes you. Occasionally even pushing the boundaries of what we traditionally call an RPG. Some of the entries have historical influence, some embody the entire era, and some are just really fun. All of them have played the major roles in. Okay, but this is stuff I'm sure you all have heard before. Well, let's get started. Um, Torment, Tides of Numeria, or Numenera. Now, um, uh, spiritual successor to the Planescape Torment. Um, this game I do have. I have the CD for it, and just at some point in time, I'd like to get this, uh, try to get this installed on my computer, and I'd like to be able to stream this someday. Because I actually did find this game to be pretty cool. Pretty cool. Kind of like Baldur's Gate, except more of a... I want to say cyberpunk. Like I said, I only played it a few times, like many, many years ago. But otherwise, this game, I've never even heard of. Uh, Dragon Quest 3. No, it looks like Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I've heard of Dragon Quest. But I've only played one for the PlayStation 2. Never played this one before. Ah, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Seen it. Uh, started watching a walkthrough on it. It seems like a very interesting RPG. Uh, but... So, I might actually take this up someday. Seemed pretty interesting. But as far as it being in my top 10, nope. Uh, Dark Cloud 2. Only heard the name. Uh, never seen it. Never played it. Lost Odyssey. Never seen it. Never played it. Uh, the World Ends With You. I very briefly saw a speed run on this. But my verdict on that. Nowhere near enough for my top 10. Uh, Golden Sun. Never heard of it. Never played it. Pillars of Eternity. Kind of looks like a Baldur's Gate clone. And, um, Baldur's Gate, I am currently streaming this game right now. This is, um, I'm streaming the Enhanced Edition. And, but like Planescape Torment, I just found the, uh, found my original, the original one. The one with the three CDs on it. I got that in my closet, so I got that in my closet right now. At some point, I'd like to try streaming that, but it it feels like I'm being redundant, though. I already have the Enhanced Edition, and it has the, uh, it has a new expansion. I don't know the name of it, but it has the uh, expansion pack on the Enhanced Edition as well, so it feels almost redundant outside of nostalgia value to try to stream the original version. But, yeah, it's... They're saying the same thing here, too. Pillars of Eternity. It's ripping off success in Icewind Dale well over a decade earlier. Or is this... No, there... Is this a continuation of Baldur's Gate? That's the impression I'm getting. 2015. Did, um, uh, did Obsidian, um, uh, was, uh, Baldur's Gate made by Obsidian? I can't remember. Uh, Tactics Ogre. I think I played the PlayStation 1 version, and no thank you. I didn't think much of it, and I thought even less of the way they did, uh, area effect damage on there. You cast a fireball, it didn't go <laughs> I said a little fireball would or a little fireball would like 
blow up each and every single square of the area of the AOE area. Ah, uh, no, thank you. No, freaking thank you. But as far as that, um, now Ogre Battle. Now that I think about it, Ogre Battle 64, I absolutely love that one. Especially the, um, especially the storyline. And it's got probably, um, one of my all-time favorite good guys in that game. I don't know his name. I know he's the leader of the Resistance. He's a merchant. But, uh, I was almost in tears when I first started read, first started listening to him. Uh, so he does deserve a place in my top ten. Or just on him alone. Um... I'm just going to say number five. So. Ogre Battle 64. Uh, number five on my list. Oh, Bastion. Yes, I played this one recently, and it is flipping awesome. Although, I wouldn't... I wouldn't really call this a RPG, though. I mean, I've only played it a few times, but I thought it'd be flipping awesome. Um, but as for RPG elements, I don't think there really was one. Um, it was... You could, uh... You could set passive buffs. You can, uh, select weapons. You can uh, do various. You can do various loadouts, uh, but I wouldn't really call it a RPG. But what I'll go ahead and do, since um, I'll take Gabe Informer's word at this, but I'm only gonna set it to. I'm only gonna rank it at either probably ten. I mean, despite the fact that the game is just that game is flipping awesome, but I don't really recall a whole lot of uh. RPG elements in there. But, again, I'll type this, I'll type this out as well. Taking game no in armor at their Hang on, clearing some room. I'm doing this on a program called Scrivener. It's a, basically a new and improved WordPad. I use it if only because you can change the background color. So, still moving some stuff around. Um, I might be able to show. I might be able to show this to you. Here, I'm on my OBS right now. See, this is what I got going right now. I'll go ahead and do. I'm um, going back on Scrivener. I need to fix something. I gotta change the margins on this. I don't want this spilling over into my webcam. So let me double check. Okay, good. Okay, back to the list. But yeah, like I said, Bastion is a freaking awesome game. But uh, then again, but on the downside, I don't 
wouldn't really call it an RPG. Or there's at least not enough elements in there for me to call it that. So because of that, though, I'll, I'll, I'll make it number 10. Stunning art style. Gravity voice narrator. And um, one thing I did like about uh, about this, um, it was it, it was narrated in the third person. Um, there was another game that kind of that did that too. I can't remember the name of it. It's a side-scrolling platformer. You're kind of a. You look kind of like a. You're kind of a weird bag-looking thing. I don't I don't know the name of it. It. My brain locked up. So, but I. I'll. If I remember to, I'll come back to that. But basically, he spoke to the main character as in a third person. Rather than a narrator that talks to you personally, uh-oh, you might not want to do that, otherwise you get blown up, you know, that kind of thing, or, or, you know, you, you, get, what I, you get what I mean. Dragged in Bastion, for the first time, both helmet. Lonely hero fought through a world devastated by calamity. And the whole game here had a, had a southern style theme to it. You're, um, you're drinking alcohol, Instead of using mag magic items. He, they said the same thing here too. I didn't... They say just the right amount. Or just the right mix. I thought it was a little too heavy on the action side. Because like I said. Um, you weren't... You couldn't determine your strength, intelligence, charisma, dexterity, or anything like that. You, you didn't do that in this game. Um... All you did was just choose your loadout. You know, what kind of weapons are you going to use? What kind of what kind of attachments, for lack of a better word, that you can add on them, etc. But I'll, I'll move along. I can pretty much talk all day about Bastion. Panzer Dragoon Saga, never heard of it. Tales of Symphonia, I've only heard the name, but never seen it, never played it. Radiant Stories, same thing. Uh, I've only heard the name, uh, but never seen the game, never played the game. Vagrant Story, same thing. Uh, Polar Radiance, uh, heard the name, and kind of hard to believe I've never even seen the game and never played the game despite the game coming out in 1988, uh, back when I was, uh, Back when I was still in high school, I figured I would have figured I would have seen the game at least once, but nope, right by me. Uh, Might and Magic. I played the. I think it was the PlayStation One version. I don't know which version of it. Just the one that was on the PlayStation One. But I never seen this one. Never played it. Uh, never heard of it. Uh, never heard, never heard of it, or, I only know, I've only heard the name, Xenoblade. Never seen the game, never played the game. Ah, South Park, Stick of Truth. Um, seen the game, I've seen a, I've seen a speed run of it. Uh, from what I've seen of it, I might actually give this game a go someday. But, um... If it was any... But, um... Yeah, but from what, I, from what I've seen of the speedrun, I'd actually probably like it, but probably not enough to give it a top... put it in the top ten, but it'd still be pretty playable. Uh, Destiny. Heard the name. Pretty popular game, often talked about, but despite all that, never seen it, never played it. Never heard of it. Uh, never heard of that one either. And here's another one. Um, Wasteland. Came out in 1988, believe it or not. Never heard of that one either. Uh, only 
you heard the name Radiant Historia. Aside from that, never seen it, never played it. Um, Ultima. There is a metric ton of Ultima games out there. Um, I tried briefly playing one of them. I don't know which one. I got about maybe five minutes in, didn't care for it for some reason or another, and went off and did something else. Shadow Hearts, never heard of it. Now, uh, Monster Hunter World. Uh, from what I saw of it, I thought it looked awesome. Problem is, is uh, I played a uh, Monster Hunter World, but the big issue I have with it is that uh, it uses up all my resources on my computer. Uh, CPU, RAM, uh, graphics card, everything. And this is with all the graphics settings at the lowest too, so basically it's unplayable. My computer can't handle it. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, a little more RPG -y than Bastion, but um, still, there's uh, to me there's really not enough RPG elements in there for me to call it call it an call it an RPG anything. But despite despite that, this is for the longest time my all-time favorite game. But as I got older and older and played more and more games, it's um. Uh, it's still pretty up there, but uh, I will go ahead and give this a, I'll give it a ranking of nine, mostly because again, like Bastion, um, like Bastion, it, it's a great game, and as, as I said a few moments ago, for the longest time, it was my all-time favorite game, but there's really, to me, not enough RPG elements in there for, for to have the RPG label tacked onto it. Nevertheless, I'll take uh, Game Informer at their word and add it. Okay, so there's what I got right now. Number 10, Bastion. Number 10, number 9, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. So, let's press on, shall we? Uh, Paper Mario. I've seen it briefly. It goes over my head. And the appeal of Mario is lost on me. Always has. Jade Empire, never heard of it. Undertale, um, played it, streamed it. Um, yes, and I, I love the theme. That's probably a unique quirk to this game. You don't have to kill every enemy you come across. I love the um the alternate win condition condition on it. You can uh. Instead of fighting him physically, you basically fight him mentally. Pacifist RPG challenge players to think about violence and what it means to be a force of positivity and a belief. All while introducing a memorable cast of characters on the throne. But, um, I have streamed it once or twice. Um, I love it in theory, in practice. It... It's one of those, like Mario, it goes over my head. I don't know why. Even though it, even though it really shouldn't. I almost want to put it in the top 10 just for its uh, revolutionary concept. Almost. But I'll put Undertale in honorable mention. So let me add... So there's what I got. Honorable mentions. Undertale is one of them. Okay, so right along. My uh the trackball on my mouse is getting real sticky. 
Disgaea, Hour of Darkness. Heard the name, never seen it, never played it. Uh, Divinity, I hear it's a really popular game. Turn-based games are even embarrassed with one person lording over all combat and party operations. Divinity. Oh, okay, so they just basically took a turn-based games and made a co-op out of it then. But aside from that, I've only heard the name, never seen it, never played it. Path of Exile. Uh, that is, yes, I, for, for probably about nine months, I streamed this game. Um, absolutely love it. Uh, on the downside, though, it is marred by one serious issue. It's got an antiquated leveling system. It was probably the biggest reason that made me quit. Um, there is no level boost in that game. Um, if you want to create another character, you got to start all the way over at level 1, and you got to start the storyline all over again. If you want to try a different build, you're basically punished for it, because it costs a shit ton of a currency in order to do that, because you have to, like... It costs a lot to respect your character, and then you gotta, you gotta re-equip the gear, you gotta get the gems, you gotta do this and that and the other. It's just too more trouble than it's worth. Aside from that, Path of Exile is an awesome game. Um, I'll give it a, I'll give it an eight. Could have been higher, but again, that antiquated leveling system, it to me is unforgivable. So there's what I got. Number eight, Path of Exile. Uh, I think I can spam my screen a little bit. There we go. This is really bugging the crap out of me. Sticky trackball. Um, XCOM. Never heard of it. Ah, uh, Mass Effect. I'm guessing the entire franchise. Space games in general just don't do it for me. Never been into them. StarCraft. Anything with a space theme makes me just go, eh. Um, but on the other hand, the popularity of Mass Effect, that whew, goes over my head. Uh, Mario whew, goes over my head. The appeal is lost on me. Darkest Dungeon. Um, flat out number one. That. No question on that one. Number one all-time favorite right there. Um, I might spend a little more time than necessary on it, but I'll explain one reason why. I don't know if they're going to say it on here. Lovecraftian, at Lovecraftian atmosphere. Um, the art style. The, the art. Uh, I didn't absolutely fall in love with the art or anything like that. It is pretty, it is pretty unique. It's... I'll say it's pretty. It's pretty unique. Not something I've seen a whole lot of other games. Um, not as not as good as the artwork in say Diablo, but it's still pretty decent. I would much rather watch something like this. I'd rather see something like this than freaking the damn JRPG crap. Uh, Mario, tired of seeing that. Um, I guess uh, as far as favorite art styles, I'd probably place this. At number three, uh, World of Warcraft, the Warcraftian, the Horde. I'd place that at number, probably number two. Uh, number one, number one would probably be Di Diablo. I tend to like the biker look. But aside from that, and what they're saying here is it's a very, 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 very RNG heavy, heavy game. It's very heavy on percentages. Uh, 
Um, they don't mention it here, but I'll probably mention one of the biggest reasons why I like, one of the biggest reasons why this is number one. Um, they hit the mark with their stress mechanic. They really added humanity in here, because, uh, nearly every other RPG I played, it's like they could seemingly run dungeons forever. You know, they try to come, you know, you know, they add humanism in their quest lines. They add humanism in the voice acting. They add humanism in their acting, but yeah, when you when they get put into a damn dungeon, you know, it's like they can just go on forever, like frickin' porn stars or something. You know, they can do it, they can just go on and on and on and on. It's like you're controlling a party of, uh, it's like you're controlling a party of Energizer bunnies that can just delve forever and ever. When in reality, that ain't, it don't work like that. I mean, picture the Vietnam, picture, I mean, imagine if the Vietnam War was like a party-based RPG. I mean, they'd be fighting forever. But no, you know, somebody, you know, somebody gets shot, you know, and then everybody else in the group, they start cracking off and they start crying and start going nuts and PTSD kicks in and all that. And this game here addresses that. You know, things get too hairy and stressful inside of a dungeon. They start going crazy. They lose their sanity. Um, and then when you go back in town, they have a place called the Sanitarium. Very popular location. That's where you're pretty much going to be sending a lot of your adventurers because... They flew off the handle in the middle of a dungeon and became paranoid or masochistic or whatnot. You got to put them in a sanitarium to, to have them to get their sanity back. That's that's pretty true in real life. So they nailed it with Darkest Dungeon. Um, but yeah, that'll that's probably the big one. It's probably the only game I can think of where they actually address that. I, again, most other games, I mean, you can. You can do something like, even a game like Path of Exile, you can sit there and run map after map after map after map. You can run them forever, and it's like, not they don't they don't go nuts or they don't go crazy or they, you know, they don't get philosophical or introspective or anything like that. It, it's just, well, okay, we just killed one, done one dungeon, now on to the next. But uh, that and um, but it's also what they say here too. Uh, you're going to expect to lose a fair amount of characters, and it is permadeath, something I like, and it, and it, uh, it really is permadeath. You, once you lose your character, you lose them forever. Like, you don't get death benefits, you don't get, you don't get upgrade points to spend, you don't get cash to spend or anything like that. He's gone. That's it. They die. They're gone. Toodaloo. So. But, but as we're at, uh, Rank number 64 right now. I still have 63 more to go. I'm just going to stop here and just keep on going. Uh, Valkyria Chronicles. Heard the name. Never seen it. Never played it. Baldur's Gate. I'm currently streaming this right now. And this does, this does deserve a high... This does deserve a ranking that's pretty high up there. I used to play the shit out of this back in the 90s. And I'm currently playing it right now. And I'm... Um, I guess uh, I should probably mention too one of the other things I like about Darkest Dungeon. It's probably also one of the things that also uh, accelerated the burn my burnout of that game was cheats. And I and uh, while I'm back here, I should also um, I also need to mention too one other thing I like about this game that I actually uh, I actually made the mistake of cheating myself out of is the inventory system. You only got 14 slots in there. You only have 14 slots. And they cannot be upgraded. Like, that is all you get. So you have to... And uh, stuff will drop like crazy on here. You'll get heirlooms that are used to upgrade your manor. To upgrade your shops. For lack of a better word. Um, and they also drop a lot of gold. That um, you'll need to, to buy stuff. To buy treatment. To, to upgrade your characters, etc. So, it's... I've never seen an inventory like it. Usually it's like Final Fantasy inventory. You know, you can got 999 slots that all have a capacity of 99. You know, it, it's bas it's basically a bottomless inventory. Most most every other game I play, it has that. Um, can't really think of any at the moment that didn't. This is uh, one of the few games out there that has a very limited inventory. That's revolutionary right there. But again... I, again, if I didn't, I mean, if I, I mean, if I'd have known, 
I was going to really screw myself out of the enjoyment of this game by using those cheats. I wouldn't have done it. But uh, mainly, mainly what I cheated on with this was uh, doubling the uh, doubling the item capacity. Item capacities and all the items. But again, coming to find out later, I really screwed myself out of my enjoyment of the game, though. So it's still enough to be my favorite, though. But, but like like I said, the inventory system and the, the cheats, the cheats really added the game. Same thing with Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. One of the things that uh, I really liked about this was um, it's practically a debug menu. And 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 no no I don't, I don't use it to make level ninety nine characters with. You know, plus 99 magic armor with plus 99 vorpal swords or anything like that. Um, I gave that shit up back in the mid-90s with Diablo 2. Which, I'm sure is probably going get to a, get a spot in my top 10 somewhere. But, I'm going to say, uh, with all this, I'll go ahead and give it... I'll give it number 4. Uh, great game, not quite enough to give it a number one or even a number two, but still high enough to be pretty high up there. Uh, Witcher 2. I watched a little tiny bit of Witcher 3. From what little I saw of that, it's probably going to be like, um, it's probably going to be like Mario. It, the whole appeal of Witcher whew, goes over my head. Icewind Dale have yet to play this. Never seen it. But uh, it's I'm guessing it's going to be a continuation of Baldur's Gate. Still not. <sighs> Stupid trackball. So I can't really rank this because I never played it. Uh, Chrono Cross. Uh, it, uh, is a successor to Chrono Trigger. I played it one time back in the 2000s. It was a PlayStation or a PlayStation 2. It was a two-game CD. It had, I think, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 2 for the Super Nintendo. And then Chrono Trigger. I played it one time. Didn't really think anything of it. So, like a lot of other games, the appeal of Chrono Trigger goes over my head. Never played Chrono Cross, though, but I'm pretty sure I'd have the same verdict. Never heard of it. Almost, And I'm almost embarrassed considering it came out in 1985. That's back when I was uh, really, really, really passionate about video games. But never heard of it. Uh, Dragon Age. Heard the name, never seen it, never played it. Uh, Fable. Same thing. Only heard the name, never seen it, never played it. Skies of Arcadia, never heard of it. Grandia. Uh, heard the name, never seen it, never played it. Star Ocean, never heard of it. Elder Scrolls. Um... I want to. I I watched a speed run on Skyrim, and I, I watched another speed run on I think Daggerfall. Uh, but I wanna I wanna stream one of these Elder Scrolls games. I don't really know which one though. I'd probably say the one that uh that takes up the least amount of space on my uh, on my stream. Um, whichever one's most resource friendly, I would think the older ones. Dragon Quest. Um, definitely not enough to be in the top 10, but I have played this. And I played it for the PS2. PS2, um, some pretty interesting artwork. Um, playable. 
not not too good. Not, I mean, not a great game, but it didn't suck either. Well, Billy. Ah, uh, Pokemon. Pokemon. Over my head. Xeno Gears. Um, just like that other Xeno game that I can't remember the name of. Back up there. Um, I only heard only heard the name. Never seen it. Never played it. Persona. Same thing. Only know the, Only heard the name. Never seen it. Never played it. Um, Zelda. With the exception of A Link to the Past, which is probably my favorite one. Haven't really kind of like Mario and a lot of those other a lot of those others Zelda whew, goes over my head I played the very very first one on, on the regular Nintendo um, didn't I just basically sat around played it the whole time I'm like a dumb blonde just I don't get it that's all I do is run around kill stuff I don't get it. So, but um, uh, I watched a bit. I watch a. Uh, I played a link to the past. It is my favorite one. Um, I watched a. Uh, Ocarina of Time. I watched a little bit of the speed run. Saw it. I played a little tiny bit of it many years ago on the '64. Uh, but again, I didn't care for it. The whole franchise is just. Eh. Um, Demon Souls. If it's anything like uh, if it's anything like Dark Souls, um, which I forgot to mention, uh, I am I am streaming Dark Souls. Uh, played it one time, didn't even get past the first boss. So, uh, so I basically basically ran away with my tail between my legs, but I don't think it's really. Part of it is the difficulty of the bosses and the content, but another part of it is just the clunky as hell controls. There's like a... They're not very responsive. Like, if I want to back step, if I want to back step, I have to basically hold down the button until he actually does it. You can't just tap it. Kind of like a... Unlike God of War. God of War, which is just unrespon which is super responsive. Tap the stick. He rolls. Tap a button. He attacks, you know? Tap the magic button. He cast the magic. It isn't like on here. I have to hold the button down until he does it. So too sluggish for my taste. Oh, Kingsfield. Okay. Um, I did play this. I think it was for the regular PlayStation. Uh, again, too slow and sluggish. I had to use a Game Shark on that just to make it playable. Uh, again, Mass Effect, uh, just like Mario and whatever other ones I meant, mentioned that I can't remember. Whew, the appeal is lost on me. Uh, Fire Emblem, heard the name, never seen it, never played it. Uh, Wizardry, oh wow, this goes back a while. I played, um, I played one of the Wizardries for, uh, for the Super Nintendo. Uh, played the crap out of that. But not enough for it to warrant a spot on my top 10 though. But uh, Wizardry, I don't, again, I don't know which one I played. I played one for the Super Nintendo. And I played one for the PlayStation 2. Both of them are pretty awesome games. Uh, but again, not enough for it to be on my top 10 though. Shadowrun. Um... I've got the um I've got the book I've got some of the books on the first edition, the tabletop version, the first edition and the second edition. I think I might have a book or two on the third edition as well. But uh, I have played this for the Super Nintendo. It's um It's one it is one game that really need it really needs analog controllers. Cause um I watched uh I watched part of a speedrun just to get a feeling of what it was like to play it back in the 90s. 
Yeah, you really need an analog controller or, or even a mouse for it. Xenosaga. Only heard the name, never seen it, never played it. Uh, never Winter Nights. I tried to play this once uh, on my computer, but I kept, I think I kept getting a black screen. Like, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't start up. And, uh, it's, it is based on Dungeons and Dragons. Core campaign was entertainment. Aurora tool set. Um, Fallout. Um, just like you know, maybe I, I should really I should really put together a top ten game fran top ten popular game franchises that go over my head slash don't care for. But Fallout is enough. Fallout would be on that list. There's a lot of stuff that everybody seems to love that I don't don't do anything for me. But as far as um, as far as this version, um, never seen it, never played it. Uh, System Shock, heard the name, never seen it or played it. Ah, uh, Diablo three. Um, I got... I haven't played Diablo 3 in a very long time, but I will say it probably has my all-time favorite leveling up system. Um, I, one thing I do remember from it is uh, you only have to complete the storyline once. And um, any other characters you wanted to create, you could um, you could level them up quickly. And you didn't have to buy a level boost in order to do it. Um, I think it was one of the biggest reasons is uh, all the monsters leveled up with you. So um, theoretically, you could um, you could stay in one area, you could stay in one zone and just keep killing stuff when everything's completely cleaned. You can leave. I think you can refresh the area. I might be wrong about that come back in and do the same thing over again and since the monsters level up with you it's leveling up is very smooth so but again I haven't played the game in probably roughly four years so it's been a very long time since I played it and uh, the difficulty on it was very adjustable and you can adjust that difficulty at any time as long as you weren't in combat so I guess based on that alone but as far as the end game goes it got boring quick um it, the end game was what killed it so because uh I'll put path of exile I'll put Path of Exile at number 7. And I'll put I'll put Diablo 3 at number 8. But again, I'm I'm uh, putting Diablo 3 in my top 10 uh, mainly based on its leveling up system. For the most part, everything else wouldn't be worth in the top not wouldn't even be worth being in the top 10. So it's it's in my top ten just on the strength of that alone. I think uh, every game should have that. There's ways of boost. There's ways of uh, quickly leveling up your alts without having to buy a level boost or without having to equip heirlooms that give you some kind of big old monstrous XP boost. Um, same thing with Fallout. One thing I do have to say, I don't know if it was New Vegas or Fallout 4, I think it was, 
Um, it is a first-person shooter game, but you can um, you can hold some button down, and um, you can target specific body parts on an on an enemy, and it'll give you a percentage chance of successfully hitting those body parts. So I will have to give Fallout 4 or New Vegas one of those, one or both of them. I'll give them that. That was because that to me was pretty revolutionary. But aside from but aside from that, it doesn't do anything for me. Uh, Final Fantasy X played it, uh, played it on the PS2, played it a lot, but it got to a point where I had to get a Game Shark because I got tired of the grinding. Fantasy Star, um, heard the name. I guess it's a fairly popular game, but again, never seen any of them. Never played any of them. Ah, uh, Final Fantasy. Played the first one. Played the second one for the Super Nintendo. Played the third one for the for the Super Nintendo. Played seven. Played ten. Played twelve. Um, and now that I think about it, Final Fantasy twelve. Um, that was probably my, that's probably my favorite Final Fantasy out of all of them. Oh, and also in all these, um, I don't think I did. Okay, I'm going to make sure that, I want to make sure that uh, I don't include MMOs in there. To me, it's like apples and oranges. They're two totally different animals. So, but as far as MMOs go, I would probably rank Final Fantasy 14 as number one. Despite the fact that I'm burnt out on it. So especially considering I've been playing the game for probably almost four years now. I mean, time to move along to something else. But aside from that... Um, I'll put Final Fantasy XII. Oh, God. I want to rank it in there somewhere. Because, uh... 12 had a totally dip different atmosphere. It's... I mean, it, it's anime. I mean, it's it's an anime look, art style look, which I don't care for. But not nearly as car not as cartoony. It's really hard to explain, because if I said that to some Final Fantasy fan, they'd probably look at me like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, but I'll go ahead and I'll just make it an honorable mention. I love the Gambit system. So I guess um, since I did the same thing with Diablo 3, I'll go ahead and do with um, Final Fantasy 12 as well. And then the next question would be... Oh, what would I rank it? I'll move Path of Exile down to six. If only because um, and then I'll move uh, Diablo three. No. Ugh, I can't move. I can't move Diablo three up. I just thought about uh, <clears throat> Diablo, the epitome of terror and evil, with a with a smoking hot hourglass body. Ooh, baby, I can't move him up above eight. Just, I'll. I will gladly make Final Fantasy XII above. I'll give it seven. Okay, so here's what I got so far. Yeah, so yeah, I like I said, they made Diablo look like a hot babe. Uh, no, so it is not going any higher than eight. Um, and I got half a mind to go ahead and move it. I got half a mind to move it into the number ten spot and move Bastion and Castlevania up to the, up to the two. Just, just on that alone, it, that was unforgivable. Um, but otherwise, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. 
only 33 more to go. Man, it's been almost an hour. Uh, Valkyrie pro Profile, heard the name, never seen it or played it. Ultima, uh, like I said, I only played one of them for a brief time, couldn't get into it. But otherwise, yeah, they got a whole myriad of Ultimas out there. Persona, same thing. Only heard the name. Uh, Sui Koden. Heard the name. Never seen it, never played it. Okay, and this one here, um, Super Mario RPG. I did play it fairly often. Um, mechanically, uh, I guess um, kind of like Final Fantasy fourteen. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good game as an RP as RPGs go. Not enough for being the top ten, but but yeah, it's still it's still a pretty fun game to play. Uh, but again, as far as like the Mario the, the Mario image, uh, Mario Pantheon, for lack of a better word, it just whew, goes over my head. Earthbound. Uh, pretty popular game. Watched a speed run on it. Didn't care for it. Dragon Age, same thing. Or no, Dragon Age. Um, know the name, never seen it or played it. Kingdom Hearts. I played um, I played one of them on PS2. Didn't care for it at all. The whole Disney thing didn't care for. Um, and the way they structured it, it looked more like a damn. It was more like a Disney Grand Tour. Which I didn't care for that format at all. Ah, Dark Souls. Uh, just like I said earlier, I streamed this game for the first time yesterday. Um. Uh, but um, I'm gonna give it another go here at some point. But I think two things have to happen in order for me to play this more consist, play this more often. One, there needs to be an option in that game don't know if it's in there. Like I said, I only played it one time. There needs to be an option for me to pan the camera backward, back, like, farther up in the air so I can see more of the action. Because where I had it at the time was practically a ground floor. I couldn't see diddly squat. So it really limited my options. And, uh, two, there is needs to be a way to make the controls more tighter. Like I said earlier about Demon Souls, it isn't like God of War, or if you've ever even heard of it, One Finger Death Punch. That was another I was thinking of. And you could just sit there and just repeatedly tap the buttons back and forth. And it's super responsive. Um, God of War was like that too. You know, your character responds the moment you push the button or pull or push the stick. It responds immediately. This game here, it's real sluggish, which I can't really have that. So, my verdict on that. Not sure which one this is. It was on the Super Nintendo, but again, I don't know which one this is. Okay, Cecil. So this is Final Fantasy II. Um, here we go. Unpopular opinion. Um, I like the RPG. I like. I mean, I played this game a ton back in my back in the nineties. I mean, back in my 20s, yeah, I played the crap out of it. But as far as it being enough for me to put it in my top 10, nope. And I also kind of forewarned everybody, too. I'm probably not going to get into a lot of the games that most everybody else gets into. Especially at my age, I'm 47 now. My tastes have changed over the years. But now, think about it, even back then... Even back then, I don't think this was even my all-time favorite game. Now that I think about it, I'm going to... Honorable mention, I got a couple here I want to add. Oh, and, and in my honorable mention list, um, I might be taking some things out of my top ten and putting them in my honorable mention, and taking some things out of my honorable mentions and putting them in my top ten. So there might be some switching around here. But I'll go ahead and... Uh, Switch to this. An honorable mention definitely goes to a goes to Draken. Um, this is one of those games that I loved immediately. 
despite all of its bugs and flaws, to me it looked like a rush job is what it was. They basically an incomplete game. They want there were so many things they wanted to do with it, but they had it they had to get the game shipped before the deadline and all that, so there was a lot of things that couldn't they couldn't get in there. Um, but aside from that, I I found it I found a pretty inspirational one. I think it was probably the first ever. It was a first. It was kind of like a precursor to Doom. Kind of a precursor to first-person shooters. It wasn't like a. It wasn't like, like um the older, like the older first-person RPGs. And now that I think about that, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here right now. This is going to be number my number two. But it's, it's got to be for the Super Nintendo version. But yeah, Dungeon Master is number two. Um, the music was great on it. <clears throat> I mean, to this day, I have the, I have the, I have the whole soundtrack. There's a YouTube playlist. I still listen to it from time to time. Like, like, I mean, to this day, I still listen to it. It hasn't really lost its appeal. So that's got that going for it. Um, it is the first ever first-person RPG, but it's a it's kind of a grid-based. It's kind of grid-based, and um, it had a unique XP system. Your skills get better the more often you use them. I can think of maybe one game that I don't know the name of back in the 90s that did that. Every other um, RPG I played, it's uh whenever you, whenever you kill that level one imp, all of a sudden you can cast fireballs and meteors, and all of a sudden, poof, you're stronger, poof, you're smarter, you know. It was just it was just flat boring XP. Dungeon Master went totally different and made it so that your skills got better the more often you use them. That's revolutionary. Um, but aside from that, I guess the overall overall ambience, for lack of a better word, it has a it had a food and water mechanic. That was another reason. Um, all almost like Darkest Dungeon, your characters couldn't couldn't run around in the dungeon forever and ever and ever. Um, there's a D Dungeon Master had a food had a food meter and a water meter. If um you ran if you're too hungry and or too thirsty, you will start losing health. So you had to eat food and you had to drink water in order to stay alive down there. So, so far that I can think of, these are the only two games. These are the only two games I know of that actually address the issue. They, address, they truly address the humanity of running a dungeon. But, um, but going back to here, Draken was um, it, it was it's a first person game. It's a first person game, just like Dungeon Master, but it's like a it's a smoothly scrolling one, like Doom or any other first person shooter. It's it's uh, smooth scrolling, first person. That was that. I think that's the first one if I'm guessing right. Um, the soundtrack that. Like Dungeon Master, the dra soundtrack to Draken, to this day, from from ever since ever since I set up a YouTube account, like way back in the mid to late 2000s, I still listen to the Draken soundtrack to this day. It's something that's never it's never gotten old. It's a it's and. And to be fair, no, I don't listen to the soundtrack constantly, like every day of the week, twenty, you know, twice on Sunday. It's one of those that I don't listen to very often, be for the sole purpose of avoiding burnout. Dungeon Master soundtrack, same thing. I don't listen to it that often, for the sole purpose to, of avoiding burnout. It's the music is that good to me. So, so getting back to the rest of the list. Um, EverQuest. Um, popular game 
Only know the name. Only heard of the name. Never seen it. Never played it. Plus, um, M plus yeah, and it's also an MMO. So I'm trying not to rank MMOs in my top ten. Uh, they're two, two totally different animals to me. Um, Elder Scrolls. I said it earlier. There's a whole ton of Elder Scrolls out there. I want to stream at least one of them. The trouble is, is I don't know which. Probably um, whichever one is the cheapest, whichever one I can get for free, and whichever one uses the least amount of resources on my computer since streaming uses up a lot of computer resources, so. Diablo! Although, I only played it on the, uh, on the PS1. But yeah, it was the one that started it all. It's got my favorite art style. It's got my favorite art style. Um, well, number three is open. But I'm probably going to say uh, But again, I've only played Diablo one time. And the art the artwork on there, the whole atmosphere was pretty revolutionary on that. But I'm really torn between So I won't I'll give Diablo uh, I guess another little rule I got that I forgot to bring up. I want to give um for all these games that have numerous volumes in their library, I only want to go with one. Um, a top ten, a, a top ten YouTube channel called, I think it's WatchMojo.com. They do the same format too, with um, if there was a uh, movies, movies and media that have multiple, multiple parts in their franchise, like The Godfather, Godfather one, two, three. Um, the James Bond ones, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to movie number 5,000. <clears> they only went with one. I'll, I'll try to adhere to the same thing here. So, so I'm going to, I'm still going to stick with Diablo 3. Am I in the right window? No, I'm not. So, I'm still going to stick with Diablo 3. Mainly because um, because of its great leveling up system that doesn't require you, that doesn't require me to buy a level boost or doesn't require me to use cheats. But uh, I've never I've never played Diablo the first one. Never played it enough uh, to really give a give a well-informed opinion on it. Like I said, I only played it one time on my PlayStation, and even then, um, I think I used a Game Shark on it for infinite money. Just decked myself out in the most powerful gear available. Basically, just <sighs> steamrolled down to Diablo himself and killed him off in short order. So I don't remember a whole lot about it. But uh, I will go ahead and uh, now that I think about, I will go ahead and uh, give the first one an honorable mention. Uh, Persona, again. Okay, now that's... Okay, as hipster as it might sound... Diablo defined... I mean, Diablo is way more revolutionary than Persona 5, so why the hell is Persona 5 even higher... Why the hell is Persona 5 higher than Diablo? Of course, then again, my top 10 list isn't exactly what a anybody in anybody would call normal so <laughs> I'm not one to talk but again persona never seen it or only heard of the name never seen it never played it uh, Final Fantasy 7 played the crap out of this back in the 90s um, good game uh, but again not enough to be in the top 10 Ultima online um, again only heard the name, never seen it, never played it. Uh, Secret of Mana, 
supposed to be a super, super popular game. The appeal of it is lost on me. Pokemon. Popularity is lost on me. I'm more of a Magic the Gathering kind of person. Duet. Another one. Heard the name. Never seen it. Never played it. Planescape Torment. Um... Again, I've got... I've got this in my closet right now. I have yet to get it installed on my computer and to try my hand at streaming it, if possible. Uh, and something else I forgot to mention, too. Um, when I say streaming it, I got kind of a... I got kind of a unique philosophy on that. With rare exception, I don't play games unless I can stream them. If I can't stream them, I don't usually play them. I'm at a point I'm at a point now where I don't feel it worth my while anymore to just to just play them just play them offline I gotta feel I, I feel a need to share my experience with everybody as creepy hippie as that might sound so I mean I could I could probably go into I could probably go into go into fair detail as why why I work that way but not this ain't the place to do it but again um, I, the jury's going to be out on this. When I'm able to stream this game, I could probably give a better answer. Chances are I might be up there with uh, Baldur's Gate, but we'll see. Uh, Fallout 3. I, again... We're in, we're in disagreement on this. I mean, I think a game like uh, like Diablo needs to be placed way higher, or, or at the very least, Bloodborne needs to be lower than uh, Diablo. Diablo, I mean, Diablo was pretty much the one that started them all, as far as ARPGs go. I mean, Bloodborne shouldn't be higher than Diablo on the list. But aside from that, I think I'll watch the speed run on it. Look like a Dark Souls clone. So, they didn't, otherwise I've never actually played the game. Ah, Final Fantasy Tactics. I believe I found my spot for... Um, and I already got Final Fantasy twelve in there. So, this is going to be some pretty tough debate right here. Because, uh... I love Final Fantasy's gambit system. It means I don't have to be so damn tedious with the game. But uh, I also, one thing I really liked about Final Fantasy Tactics was their uh, their uh, their auto combat system. It's the AI on there was just freaking genius. I mean, real real versatile, real adaptable. I mean, it's one of those instances where the AI would actually play the game way better than I ever could. I mean, granted, they tend to they tend to focus on stats over stats over substance. Like it, they, the AI tends to go for straight DPS, but I could easily manipulate that. Just don't uh with this job system. I just don't I don't unlock certain spells that uh certain spells that the game would just spam over and over. So. There's an easy workaround for that. Um, so it's it's going to be a hard call between Final Fantasy XII and Final Fantasy Tactics. But um, they are very neck and neck. So... And again, I'm trying to... I'm trying to avoid having... Two or more games from the same uh, from the same franchise on my top ten, so I can't have them both. So, do -do 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 -do. so I'll just um, I guess like the old saying goes, when two children are fighting over a toy, I take the toy away. I'll go ahead and make them both honorable mentions.
So now I got another seven slot open. So there's what I got so far. I'm in the top. Well, I'm now in their top ten. Um, Baldur's Gate two. I actually played it. Um, pretty cool game. Pretty cool game. Um, but I, again, I haven't played it in many, many years. I want to play the first Baldur's Gate first. Um, but even then, again, like I said with uh, Diablo and Final Fantasy, I only want one game out of an entire out of each franchise in my top 10 the same way uh watchmojo.com works oh and then i totally forgot about this diablo 2 oh god oh so i'll go ahead and um I'll put Diablo 2 in the honorable mentions. I feel like I'm really limiting limiting myself with this role, but again, I don't I don't want to do what uh some of these uh some of these other top ten lists that I've looked at from from um, other YouTubers, other websites. It's like it's like every fucking game is like part is like a Final Fantasy game. I've seen this. This is something else I was trying to avoid. It was also with, it was also the inspiration for me making my own. It's freaking annoying. I see somebody else's top 10 list. It's like half their games are fucking Diablo games. You know, and the rest are like, like basically Diablo clones. You know, I've seen other guys who have a top 10 list where it's mostly Final Fantasy games or JRPG games. You know, so again, that I find that very annoying. So I guess um, but uh, I guess the edge is still gonna go to D believe it or not, the edge is still gonna go to Diablo three, again if only because of their leveling up system. With Diablo two, um, I mean I understand it was made back it was made in, way back in the day, but the thing of it is, it was it's just like Path of Exile. It's marred by the fact that if you wanna. Like if uh, you want to you want to create another character, you have to create a whole new one. And you have to start over from scratch. Whereas uh, Diablo three, you, whereas Diablo three, you don't have to do that. Uh, the first Diablo, you have to. This one here, you have to. Um, the third one, they got it right. So. So I guess I'll. I'll make a uh, Diablo two an honorable mention. Okay, so there is one list thus far. Okay, so let's move right along. Um, Star Wars. I mean, I grew up with the first three movies, so I love those. Um, the rest of them, I don't care for at all. Uh, the games, uh, the, I mean, I mean, I know, I mean, I know about the Star Wars games. I think I watched the speed run on one of them. I don't know which one, but it involves like, it involves the, the speed involves the guy jumping a lot. <laughs> he'd, he'd do that a lot. But I don't know which one that is, but again, like the Fallout series, like Final Fantasy, or like most of the Final Fantasy, or no, like Fallout and Star Wars, it, I don't get into it. 
Uh, World of Warcraft, it's an MMO. Again, I'm not including MMOs in this list. But otherwise, yeah, it's a game I played for about four and a half years. So... Uh, Witcher, Wild Hunt. I only saw a little tiny bit of the game, but from what I saw of it, it kind of resembled Dark Souls. So it just, it went in one eye and out the other. Mass Effect, same thing. Very popular game. Witcher is supposed to be a popular game, but the appeal is lost on me. Mass Effect, same thing. The appeal of it is lost on me. But then again, I'm not really into space games. Never have been. Uh, Chrono Trigger. The appeal of this game is lost on me, and like I said earlier, I only played the game one time uh, back in the 2000s on a... I think it was on a... I think it was on a PlayStation. It was a two-game set. It was a two-game two disc. It had... Excuse me. It had this and Final Fantasy II for the Super Nintendo. Didn't really think a whole lot of the game. Oh, I forgot to mention, too. Um, I did try to play this recently. I I did try to stream this, but the problem is, is uh, the streaming software I use, OBS, it doesn't recognize this game. I, it won't, it won't capture the game. It, again, it doesn't recognize it. It just comes up as a black screen. So, again, my OBS has to be able to recognize a game in order for me to play it. So, so it's, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be snobby or anything like that, but just, or I'm not trying to be devil's advocate or whatever. I, I did try to give this game a go, but it just wouldn't work. Not for lack of trying. Um, not sure which one this is, Final Fantasy VI. Okay, Kefka. That's uh, Final Fantasy III for the Super NES. Um, I only played it one time, uh, probably back in the 90s. And uh, I got as far as... Uh, I'm trying to think. It was, uh, it was a girl singing opera. I think one of your characters, you had to sing an opera, opera song, and you had to get the lines right, otherwise something bad would happen. I can't remember what. But... Uh, again, they ranked this at number two. I didn't like the game that much. Oh! And I'm sure hipsters everywhere are probably going to totally disagree with this. This is a game I never would have expected to be number one. I don't know what else would have been. I would have preferred something, uh, something like maybe Diablo 2. Like, you know, Diablo 2 or Final Fantasy. You know, the one that uh, the one that really was groundbreaking that laid the groundwork for all the RPGs to come. Maybe even Dungeon Master. You know. But, but again, um, and like I said earlier, I want to stream one of these games eventually. But the problem is, is which one? I don't think it's going to be Skyrim, though. It's the most recent... So I'm guessing it's going to be the most graphics intensive. Again, for streaming, is very resource intensive on my computer. So it's probably going to have to be an older one that doesn't have as many doesn't have the kind of requirements that this game does. So, but but yeah, there's the list. Um, I guess what I could probably go ahead and do is. You know, I got about one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six honorable mentions in here. Um, what I'll probably go ahead and do I'll just go ahead and um start shuffling stuff around in here. Since I got uh, two spaces open. So, and then the question would be, I mean, I know my top two. So, 
So I know my top two, they're definitely gonna, they're definitely these. Uh, so for number three. Yeah, I'm really having trouble deciding. Uh, I'm gonna try this. Um, Three-way tie. Or eighth. Uh, no, that wouldn't work either. It becomes less like a top ten if I do this too many times. So, yeah. So what I'll just go ahead and do Because, um, and I'll definitely put a, a and Draken to me really does deserve a spot that deserve a spot that high because, like I said, I again, the music, the music is so freaking awesome. Uh, it, it just, just on the music alone is enough for me to give it a number three spot. And now that I think about it, too, Baldur's Gate, the menu music on there, the menu music is perfect. It's one of those that I actually do not mind listening to over and over and over and over and over again. Most of their menu musics get freaking annoying after a while. I end up having to shut it off. end up having to shut it off because my ears, you know. Okay, so well, let me let me continue to look this over. I don't know, You know, I really want to get one of the Final Fantasies in there. Seems I have a I got a Diablo in there. So, man, but yeah, did I guess that's it? I mean, like I said, I want to want to get one of these two Final Fantasies in there somewhere, but. But yeah, I. Yeah, that's it. Oh, geez. I guess that's it. I can't think of anything else to say. I mean, I think I can improve on it, but I don't really know where. Uh, the only thing I can think of is uh, maybe uh, looking at another top 100, but there's probably not going to be a whole lot on any of the other top 100s that they're not going to have in this list. Um, but. It's not. Well, it took about an hour and well, it took about an hour and a half to put it together, but oh well. But I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. I'll just I'll go ahead and carve that in stone. Just say, feel free to tell me I have rocks in my head. But aside from that, well, thanks a lot for if you made it this far. Well, thanks for watching. See you all next time. Have a nice evening or morning, whatever. <laughs>